Welcome back, friends. I want to do a review of picks that come in since the end of April. Uh, most of these picks come in in uh, May and June. There's uh, just under 120 we're going to take a look at here. And I'm going to be doing this by hand, hopefully get it stabilized. And so as you get a wide-angle view right there of what we're going to be looking at, now I'm going to come in and uh, go through some details with you. Might as well go to some of the good stuff up here. This is a, a display from Fender, late 60s, early 70s, prior to uh, Tortoise Shell being banned in the U.S. in 1972. So these uh, picks inside the Fender container never actually had a Fender logo on them. So there are no known Fender genuine tortoise shell picks that have their logo but they did offer this case with uh these three picks we see in here now interestingly fender had a contract with deandria to produce all their stuff and these are undoubtedly deandria made picks but if i didn't see them inside this case here i'd also be tempted to think that they could be german as well so uh nice gold uh printing there on that container and these could get a little pricey, as this one was, over $200 for that. But still, not a bad deal for something like that. Three tortoise shell picks in a genuine Fender case. Now we're going to take a look at some interesting picks right here as well. We know we have uh, uh, Jap Japan right there, German right there. Germans made this type of grip almost exclusively on tortoise shell. And it, it actually looks etched in by hand, like they actually put a ruler down there and scored there, scored that with some sharp object, because those lines are not exactly perfectly even. Now, this is interesting because it's a uh, tortoise shell pick, about the size of a 358 and a half small jazz pick, and it came with a distressed piece of cork on it. However, I could see the shape, and I was able to measure the uh, thickness, and the thickness came in at 1.2 millimeters. So I went ahead and got some authentic cork, and I reconditioned that. Occasionally, I do have to recondition picks, and that's one that I did so there. Here we have some really nice 1950s, 1960s uh, D'Andrea genuine tortoise shell, and that one even tells us so. And these are really difficult to come by, folks, but uh, you definitely want to have a, a section in your collection for genuine tortoise shell. Here's some more tortoise shell here. Now these I could pretty much say are German because of their shallow shoulders. And what I mean by shallow shoulders is the Germans had a tendency to take a little more off the sides of their picks on these edges than the Americans did. And uh, for here's uh, an example right here. Here's an older D'Andrea 359.5 probably late 1930s, and you can see it's a little more stout on the end where this is a little more shallow here. So that seems to be a consistent feature with uh, most German picks made in the mandolin shape. I'm going to come down over here since we're in the tortoise group, take a look at these ice cube variation, whiskey on ice, slow gin on ice variations. We see the first example of this showing up in 1939 in a Pete's catalog. I'm inclined to believe most all ice cube and variants thereof were made prior uh, to the U.S. stopping production of celluloid in 1949 and that the existing supplies just carried over into the 1960s, which we know they uh, at least went into the 1960s. Not all of these, though. This is a rare uh, variant right here. Uh, 1940s. This is 1960s. These, we could say a number are 1960s. And we move over here to this corrugated right there. Nice corrugated grip. And it does have a DA logo in there if it comes into focus. It's impressed in there. This one, however, the sweet straw variation is definitely a 1940s pick. Rarely do we see any print on it. Occasionally, usually it's something like an F&N or BK from the early 1950s. Uh, more D'Andrea shapes down here. We have the 349, the 348 variant. And here you can see this particular 351, the shoulder on that. 
that wide shoulder right there that's not well tapered like we would expect with a, uh, a 351 from later on. And let me bring in an example just to compare that right there. And I want to do some more videos that compare various ages of similar type picks. But there you have it. You see these well-rounded shoulders right here, but not so. A little flatter top and wider shoulders here telling me this pick is probably, uh, if I take a look at it and see that it's hand beveled, that's probably nine, uh, late 1920s right there. And you can see it is hand beveled right down in that area there. So we're going to take a, a little trip down this side. Here we have some more whiskey on ice celluloid, but these are all three German picks here. These are German shapes. Now, I see that it was only the Germans that occasionally would use whiskey on ice, very rarely. But because these are German shapes, we're going to place them in Germany uh, from the 1930s. Here's a later piece from the 1960s, 1970s that we know to be German. And moving back here, we have the number 24, a really unusual shape. Also just simply known as the large claw. Another nice tortoise variation. I always look for variations in tortoise shell. And let me just put three side by side you could, so you could clearly see how different they are. Here uh, we have a wheat straw, a whiskey on ice, and then a, uh, a piece here and cat categorized or lacking a nickname thus far. And that's simply because we rarely come across that tortoise shell there. So we have wheat straw and whiskey on ice variations. We're going to move down here to pattern picks. Pattern picks meaning they're not black, white, or mosaic. And uh, these fall into that category, and they're not tortoise. Now, there's some really gorgeous stuff here. Take a look at that celluloid. My, how detailed that is. And I have one, a triangle like this, but the celluloid striations are running the other direction. So I wanted to put that variation in. Here's a uh, a few pieces here, and if you know your picks, that shape goes back to the 1920s. This is an older shape too, probably 40s, 50s. This goes back to the 1920s because I have this in known shapes from D'Andrew from that period of time. Laminate such of this with a sparkle in them, late 1950s to early 1960s. And uh, the highlight of this is what we call the ladies' nylon stocking laminate right there. There are about 10 of these known to exist. And when I came across this one, I, I was really stoked because rarely do you see it in, in the 351 shape. Simply, it's a laminate that appears to have a piece of fabric similar to a ladies' nylon stocking or the type of stockings women would wear back in the 40s and 50s. Moving on over here further, we have a few uh, second-generation crayons. Right there's a second-generation. This one has qualities of a second-generation as well, but it has some of that uh, more translucent celluloid we see later on. A misel, 1960s. An unusual fender, 1980s, with that uh, piece of white going through it. Some 1970 gilds here. And here we have a, a Gretsch nonstick. And there was one other company that also offered this. Uh, Bruno offered this in the 1920s and uh, <clears throat> with, that, with that grip on it. Here's a 1970s UK-produced nylon picks, CMS Wells. I can't tell you anything about these, except they're really thick. They have a type of grip on them that we see that's usually put down for on steps. I'm guessing 1970s, not really that old. Here's another one I can't give you any information on. The jury is still out on that sh uh, pick. When you're collecting vintage picks, you occasionally run across picks you just really can't say much about. Here's a variant we usually only find uh, amongst German picks, that particular type of celluloid, and I will be putting that in my German box as well as I find all the picks in that particular chunk block type of celluloid to be German. Back here we have Odie Driscoll, an uh, unrefined model. No doubt he did not put that on any of his pick cards. Here's not a D'Andrea court grip. 1930s era, uh, I could see something like this, I believe, in a, a Czechoslovakian catalog. 
and from progressive music. There's a early D'Andrea 1930s celluloid 348 with a cork grip on it. And uh, that's an interesting pick. And it's a cork style D'Andrea used. But I'm going to reserve judgment for now. Most likely D'Andrea, but unknown. 337C from D'Andrea, that was the proper catalog name. It's really a 349 with a cork, if you want to make it easy. Here's a little pick. Nice celluloid, 1930 celluloid. Couple holes in it. It says, like it, no information on it. But those holes there were usually used to put a uh, bird-wise wire loop through the pick for improved grip. And they, they're simply missing there. Really nice corrugation style and celluloid style right there. Going back to 1930s, 1920 era. And here's a cork grip I had never seen until this year. A lot of experiments with cork uh, styles in the 1940s. This is no doubt from that period, 1930s to 40s, because that celluloid, that clear orange type of celluloid, uh, was in use then. <clears throat> Here we have the Gene Schilling pick, also known as a 365 D'Andrea shape. No Gene Schilling on it. First time I've ever seen it in white. That one happens to be a thin. We have a... Uh, an Axted style model here, missing the plugs. This is a two-plugger, much rarer than the three-plugger. Going up here, we have uh, some B&Ds, B &B B&D picks from the 1930s. And they've been, the padding on it has been reconditioned. It does have a B&D logo on it. You can't see it because the camera's out of focus. There it is right there, real small. And there's a smaller version of it. Here we have two crescent grips from D'Andrea, really sweet picks, late 30s, 1940s, some Fife and Nichols picks, music store out of L.A., around uh, 1950s to early 60s, and then we have this London pick, it says London, with a harp on it, the jury store out, still out as to who made that, another variation right here, no harp, but it has the word foreign on it. Most likely made in Germany. Coming over here, we see some Gibson Impressed picks. Uh, these two up here. And this is a a, uh, a tan celluloid with a Gibson impression on it. If I could bring it up here. Let me see if I could bring it up and get a better, uh, better shot at this for you. There we go. There's the Gibson logo. Out of focus, of course. And try to get it in focus here. That's what I get for using a cell phone camera, but that's what I got. And here's a uh, an Ivoroid pick, impressed. Some Gibsons here with printing on them, late 1950s, right there. And we have some uh, Nick Manilovs. I have these in the collection. I'm going to compare them with what I have. And then probably put the spares up for trade or sell. Some nice D'Andrea bullseyes and pinwheels, the bullseye, pinwheels, 1960s era. Here's a blueprint fender, never saw that till this year. A few more D'Andreas from the 60s and 70s. Uh, Manny's, well-known music store, same with Sam Ash, same with Sam Goody. And then we have the uh, hand-cut tapering of these pick, which we see being used from the 30s through the 60s. And that's going to be a history lesson to go back and follow that pick in and of itself. Then this hard pick, Carpe. I know the Carpe felts go back to the 1950s. And this is probably from the 1950 era too. It appears to be made of Lexan, not celluloid. Has their impressed logo on it. Really nice Fender 1960s. No registered trademark. And uh, then we have a Mansfield Custom Craft. And then I'm peg to show you. So that's all I got to say for right now, folks. This has been a long video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be posting more soon. Take care.